Song of Solomon, Chapter 3 By night, on my bed, I sought him, whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. Christian, are you seeking nights when you can't sleep? Are you seeking the Lord Jesus Christ? Not to be found yet, but he is coming. You know what the Song of Solomon says? It says the groom is coming. I will rise now. You're not to stay asleep, Christian. And go about the city in the streets. Street preaching? Going door to door? In the broad ways? I will seek him whom my soul loveth. How do we seek the Lord today? We're not going to find him by going out in the streets in the city and all that. But because we love him, because we do desire the blessed hope and the great coming of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We do what God has told us and Jesus Christ has told us. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. That is a commission he sent to the eleven disciples, the apostles, through the book of Acts. They went out. We are in a period in the church age we're not to sleep. And yet, Christians do. We are in a battlefield. Why would he go, why would he grant us armor? Why does he tell us that we don't wrestle against flesh, uh, uh, flesh and blood, blood, but principalities and powers in the air? Why does he tell us that this, the flesh and the spirit are at battle with each other? Why does he tell us that we have an enemy called Satan and the devil? I will seek him whom my soul loveth. Who does your soul love? That is who you will seek. For where, the, for where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. We are commanded two things as Bible-believing, born-again Christians. A. Go in all the world and preach the gospel to the lost. B. Train up other Christians. Of no matter what age they're at. You're never too old to learn something in the Lord if it's scriptural. I sought him, but I found him not. I seek the Lord every day. But Song of Solomon tells us he's coming. The watchman. That go about the city found me. The people of the city. The policemen. The National Guard. The army. The protectors of the city. Found me. To whom I said. Who do you say to law enforcement? Who do you say about the military? Saw ye him whom my soul loveth? Now, what do you think they're going to ask me to say that? Well, who do you love? Opportunity. Look at that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only... Look at that. Look at the opportunity. It was but a little that I, pre that I passed from them. Separation. You don't stay with them. They don't want you, beloved. You find separation all through the scriptures. If they don't love God and Lord Jesus Christ, they are, you're not to be part of them. You're to move on and find somebody who will and who does. But I found him who... Wait a minute. I was very little that I passed from them. 
but I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him. See, don't give up. He's coming. It would not let him go. And you know what? The day that we see him, we're not going to let him go. You know that? You know the verse teaches right there about the bride and the Lord Jesus Christ? You'll never be separated. You're not separated. Until I have brought him into my mother's house. I have Galatians 4.26. And into the chamber of her that conceived me. The Lord's coming for us. This world is not our home. It's a place that the, that the groom will bring us back on horseback. When we come back on horseback, it will be likened to a honeymoon. You know what the, the religions consider the moon to be? The woman. We are the bride of Christ coming into a land that is full of honey, of milk and honey. Coming back to an uncursed world, the curse removed. Imagine what the land of Israel and Jerusalem is going to be when, when, the, when the curse is removed. You know, there one time it's believed that that land was absolutely fabulous during David and Solomon's reign. It's destroyed because of sin. And if it was beautiful then, imagine with the curse being removed. We talked about the rose and the lily in the last chapter. We talked about it has a thorn. Wait till the rose has no more thorn. you imagine what the beauty of the rose will be in the time of the reign of the Lord Jesus Christ? I charge you again. We saw this in 2-7. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem. See, we're not Jews. Word of forsaken dead dog, the Gentiles, by the roe, deer, and by the hinds, deer, of the field, type of world, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love, till he plead. That's the second advent. So we see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ for the bride. We see meeting in the chambers, the, the honeymoon. We see the, the second advent. Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke? Perfume with myrrh. And frankincense with all powders of the merchant. Psalms 45, 6 to 8, Matthew 2, 11. Behold his bed. No, verse 6 has to be him, his. If behold his bed, the who? Which is Solomon? type of Jesus Christ for the book of Solomon her husband the writer the author of, of what this book is for Solomon writing to the to the woman to his bride three score valiant men are about it of the valiant of Israel I don't understand protection outside the bedroom doors kind of like secret service the valiant of the Jews, Israel. Three score B to see scores twenty, that's sixty. 
And if you were to do Bible study, you might find something about that 60. They all hold swords. The word of God is spoken of as a as a sword. Being expert in war. So it's it's a protection. Now the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't need protection, but round about the throne of God, there are cherubim. Four. There are four and twenty-four elders. Innumerable company of angels. It says that one angel went and destroyed an entire army in one night without even breaking sweat. Jesus said, I, I forget how many, but I can call legion. Every man has his sword upon his thigh. Because of fear in the night. See, we're in the night. Do you have your sword by your thigh? The thigh is the strength of man. We are in a time of darkness under Satan who is who is dark. Who wants to keep people in dark. Who people love the darkness rather than light. Are you around about the Lord Jesus Christ, ready for war, ready for battle? Are you a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you standing? Are you serving? We are soldiers called to stand, not kneel. We are called the soldiers to be on the battlefield, not in the in the uh, foxhole. We are a unique soldiers of a war to say, stand and take it. And when we want to communicate with our commander, then we get on our knees and get our orders and our direction. Then we get back up. That's a unique army. And in the night, where's the light? We are the light. That makes us even more to be targets of the enemy. Here comes the light. I see it. As an army of the Lord Jesus Christ, holding light of the Lord Jesus Christ, the enemy should be seeing you come. You should hurt their eyes. They should want to run like cockroaches in the middle of the night when you flip the light switch on. And you have this sword, which is not to kill, but to give life, the word of God, which you're called to study. King Solomon made himself a chariot, mobile. Mobile. He didn't make a bed like Og. He made a chariot of wood of Lebanon. Maybe the cedars. Are you a mobile army? You ready to fight? Because all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Marvel not, the world hates you. He Solomon. You know what's funny? It speak when it speaks about God and Ezekiel it speaks about a chariot with those cherubim with the wheels and the wheels. They, I think it's David, one, one of the writers of the Old Testament speaks about God coming down in a chariot. And it looks like the Ark of the Covenant some way. When God came for, his, uh, for Elijah, he came with a chariot. 
That's something that moves. You know what God does with, with the worldly chariots? He breaks off the wheels and drowns them in the Red Sea. It says King Solomon made himself chariot. He didn't go to Egypt for these. He made these. His own chariot. You know what else the king was supposed to do before he sat on that throne? He was to copy his own word of God. He made the pillars thereof of silver. Redemption. Redemption holds us up. The bottom thereof of gold. Gold of a king. Our redemption is founded upon and rests upon gold of the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Upon the streets of gold, of pure gold, is New Jerusalem. The covering of it of purple. Royalty. A heavenly purple, a deep blue with red makes purple. Blue of the whole and the heavenly and red of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ put together. As he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Mist thereof, in the middle thereof, being paid with love. For God is love. So being paid is of God. When Moses and Aaron and Joshua and the elders go up. The Bible says in Exodus, they saw God. And guess what they saw? Under him as a pavement stone. Doesn't the Bible say our God's a rock? Don't they have bricks today where you can inscribe names of what you want and you were to buy the brick and put it down? Right, where were they got that from? Is God all done with Israel? For the daughters of Jerusalem. Oh, verse 10. It's for the Israelites. God still loves them. God's still going to build them up as a nation. Go forth. Oh, go ye know the world. O ye doors of Zion. Jerusalem. The mount of the heavenly king. And behold King Solomon. With the crown. Now we get some extra information. You can read about in the Bible how David made Solomon king instead of, uh, I think it's Abijah, one of the brothers, with Joab and Camp and did it with, with, without Nathan, without David, without Solomon, without Bathsheba, made himself king when he wasn't supposed to be. But it says, it, wherein his mother crowned him. Bathsheba was there when King David was there when they crowned Solomon. In the day of his espousals, in the day of the gladness of his heart. You read what Joab and all them were there at the party, at the false king? At the false king? The one who's not supposed to be on the throne? That is? What is that sound? What is that cheerfulness? Why does the land ring out? Because Solomon reigns. And Christ is going to speak up. What is that cheerfulness? What is that happiness? Who is that that's coming? It's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. As we cast you and the false prophet into the lake of fire. And take Satan and bound him for a thousand years. Sing out, O daughters of Zion. Your Messiah has come in victory. Instead of thorns. A crown, a king of kings, a lord of lords. 
and behind him the woman of Kedar or Kedar the bride coming to the nation of the people that is of God the daughters the people of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and the twelve tribes there will be victory one day for the church and there will be victory for the nation of Israel all under a name no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow Song of Solomon is a love letter, a book written about a love between Solomon and his wife. It is the events today of the Christian and the Lord Jesus Christ. And it may be five minutes. It may be one minute. It may be a day, a week, a month, or years to when the Lord calls for his bride to come home. The rapture. I don't care if the rapture is 250,000 years from today. It will happen. I don't care if 250 million and seven years after that. The nation of Israel will be redeemed and taken to God as his holy bride. And they will get the new earth given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the twelve tribes. No United Nuts, no Americans, no Germans, no one to defy them no more. Those that, that curse them will be cursed into the lake of fire for all eternity. Don't give up Song of Solomon just because it's sexual. Don't give up on Song of Solomon because it's just a, it's one of them books in the Bible. It's not an important book. Oh, yes, it is. Imagine one day when we get the glory and the Lord Jesus Christ calls his bride and says, Honey, come on up. God calls up his bride and Israel and says, Come on up. Let us sit before the thrones, before the cherubim, for the angels, and let us have Solomon stand up and read his Song of Solomon to us. And let's spend the part, better part of eternity looking at the husbands, God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the brides, the nation of Israel. And the church. And all that God has done for them. Isn't it told that Israel is to remember the Passover night every year? Aren't we told that the Lord's Supper, we're to take that and remember what Christ, we're going to remember all what God has done. We're going to remember all what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for all eternity. You know how long it takes to thank Jesus Christ? It takes eternal, 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 without no time to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for us. That's what it's all about. 